Greetings and salutations, everybody, and welcome to Canuck Podcast, episode number 60. And I swear this week I won't lose the episode. And joining me this week on this podcast, the one, the only, Big Boss. Hello, everybody. How are you doing this week? I'm doing all right. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I'll tell you a story about all that I've been up to, but no, I'll save you the time. It's quite boring. Mm-hmm. I know the feeling, man. I know the feeling. <laughs> Our lives are not that exciting, are they? That's why we have this to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, we've got uh, quite a filled-out show here this week. We've got, of course... Some news stories, uh, both in the realm of gaming, movies, and actually comic book <coughs> news this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a ton of stuff in our been playing, been watching, and actually we've been reading something this week. What? Oh, yeah. And we're going to kick off the show this week with uh, a segment I like to call Big Boss's Top Whatever. It's going to be our top five characters we would like to see in the new Super Smash Brothers. Possibly at DLC at this point, because the roster is pretty much done. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so, uh, I guess we can go back and forth here, one each. Sure. Uh, why don't you kick us off with one of your picks? I'm going to start off by saying I don't have, like, any of these games. Yet. I don't have a Wii U. Yet. And I don't have a... Well, I do have a 3DS, but I don't play it tonight. Yeah, so, you know, my take on this is very different from how you're taking this, so let's have some fun with this. First of all, I'm going to say, I'm going to go with the Nintendo character who I always use whenever I play Mario Party, and that's Waluigi. Nice. Yeah, I'm always that guy. He never gets any respect outside. He doesn't, and I'm like, why don't people like him so much? Like... Everybody's always, oh, Yoshi, oh, Mario, I'm like, blame. <laughs> Waluigi, it's the best. Indeed. All right, well, the first character off of my list is Bayonetta. Since, mm. you know, she's mostly a Nintendo character now, which is weird to say. <laughs> yeah, that's but, a good, I hadn't thought of her. Yeah, I think she would be a nice fit for the game. I think so. I mean, Kratos fit really well into, uh... All about, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, See, they, they uh, probably have the toner down a little bit with the whole hair being her clothes thing. <laughs> yeah. Slightly less sexualized. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as we'll discuss later when I get into the bin playing section, but, uh... <laughs> All right. But yeah, I think she could be a good fit. Sweet. Right. Back to you. An- another character who uh, has a counterpart in the game already. I'm going to go with Knuckles, the hedgehog thing. <laughs> is he a hedgehog? <laughs> I think so. He's, like, pink. I don't know. Or is he... Well, oh. Knuckles from the, the Sonic games. <laughs> that shows how much I've played them. You could tell I was grasping for characters, okay? <laughs> Trust me, it's all downhill from this point. <laughs> Oh, you wait. You think it's not bad? Oh, it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the next one off of my list is a Super Nintendo character that has been long, long forgotten since his one and only game. And that's Gino from Super Mario RPG. Okay. I want Gino back. <laughs> he was a great character. <laughs> yeah. I just thought of one, so I just changed my answer. Oh. Because this guy was actually a Wii character. Oh. Uh, I hope I'm getting his name right. But is it Travis Touchdown from No More Heroes? I think so, yeah. Yeah. He could be a character. That's true. Had No More Heroes and No More Heroes 2. Mm-hmm. And he's got his cool beam sword thing that isn't a lightsaber, but... Totally you know. is. <laughs> yeah. So that's where, I don't know, he could be a cool character in Smash Brothers. Yeah, if he's not too busy, you know, hanging out on PS3 and 360 right now. <laughs> that's the thing, they ported him over. Yeah. Snake was doing that too, so. 
And speaking of, the next one on my list is Snake. I want oh. him to return, goddammit. <laughs> Yeah, see, if he returned, I might actually want to get this game. <laughs> oh, he was so great to use in Brawl. Yeah, like, maybe for you he would. Hmm? Maybe for you he would. <laughs> I get that a lot. It's like, oh. very few people were able to use Snake in Brawl. I, I, and I wanted to, because, I mean, we all know I'm a huge Metal Gear fan. Mm -hmm. I so wanted to be really good with Snake, but I just... Didn't have the patience to, like, master his moves. I'm like, no, nah, I gotta have my go-to. I just always went back to Captain Falcon. <laughs> always, always, always. Yeah. All right, so what's the next one on your list? Are you ready for it to get bad? Oh, yeah. I want to see a character that was actually in the Dead or Alive games. Oh, dear Lord. Is it but, just one giant boob? No, it's, it's actually surprisingly not sexual. Okay. It's actually, from Dead or Alive 4, we saw Master Chief. What? <laughs> yeah, I want Master Chief to break down the walls <laughs> and go for, for Smash Brothers. <laughs> and if you think that's bad, you wait for my, get you my number one pick. Oh, I can only imagine. So, you know, going with Dead or Alive... Ryu Hayabusa wouldn't be a far-off choice for Smash Brothers. Yeah. So, did you know Ninja Gaiden originally on the Super Nintendo, or NES, actually? Yeah. Did uh, the recent Ninja Gaiden, did they make it onto the Wii U? Or? Yeah, Razor's Edge did. Okay, there we go. So, he, there's you can't rule him out completely, so... Yeah. But the next one on my list is... Well, I kind of cheated here. I have two people. What? Yeah. Oh, uh, Either Terra or Kefka from Final Fantasy VI, or three, Ooh. if you want to go with that title, because Final Fantasy was weird with their numbering. Yeah, because they brought it over. That was the third one that was brought to North America. Yep. But it was six. Yeah. So yeah, I would love to see that. Kefka would yeah. be really interesting, I think. Yeah. No spoilers, please. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right, so what's the final one? Uh, on that note, I'm going to say, you know, Chrono could be cool, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or Frog or mm -hmm. whatever from Chrono Trigger. But, all right, number one. He's been in fighting games before. Well, arguably they're fighting games. Mm -hmm. He is electrifying. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we can go one-on-one. -on -one with the great one. If you can smell what the rock is cooking. Jesus Christ. Actually, I'm going to blow your mind right now. If you say John Cena, I swear I'm ending this conversation right now. <laughs> no, but there is a way that you can get the rock in Smash Brothers. What? Yeah, because they have the Mii Fighter option. No. In which people have actually started creating like all kinds of characters like the cast from Bob's Burgers and oh my god what were some of the other ones I've seen oh they've been good too but yeah the Mii Fighter option has a lot of people to like just bypass like copyright stuff okay I got the list right here like people have created the Joker Shimon Rick and Morty Mr. Mayagagi from <laughs> <laughs> Karate Kid, Jack Sparrow, Leroy, uh, the cast from Bob's Burgers, Chef Ramsay. Wow. Well, That's the, the, <laughs> Macho <Ramsey>. Man. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. <laughs> John Marston, and Oberon from Game of Thrones. <laughs> wow. You know, if all like you list all those people, then there's just Gordon Ramsay in there. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> the guy I want to play Super Smash Brothers as. Oh, man, he's scary as fuck, though. <laughs> yeah. What does he do? Just yell at people that their food is raw? <laughs> Speaking of what, he could make an appearance on Monday Night Raw. Just oh, to say, God. this is raw. <laughs> and you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. And, well, the final one off of my list, going back to the realm of possibility, <laughs> uh, Professor Layton. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He, he he could show up and fight. I mean, 
duck hunt dogs in the game now, so why not Professor Layton? Mm -hmm. Hell, the Wii trainer, the Wii U, or the Wii Fit trainer <laughs> in the game. Oh, I will talk about them later. Got it. Ah, uh, but there you go, folks. Our top five characters we would like to see in the new Super Smash Brothers, from the realm of possibility to the what the fuck. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right, with that, let's dive into our news stories this week. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to allow you to kick it off here with a bit of RPG news. Sweet. Let me click on the article. And the news. And it relates to a game that many of us have been waiting a long, long time for. Yes. It's uh, that Kingdom Hearts 3 has been switching over to the Unreal Engine 4. Ooh. We're not really sure exactly why. Because it was made for, quote-unquote, various reasons. Mm -hmm. So that tells me a lot. <laughs> um, maybe now we'll get it here faster. Yeah. I guess maybe we're using older technology. Uh, you know? I don't know. Or... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, there's stuff I'm reading. <laughs> but yeah, so there you go. Now it's using that. So yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, it's weird for Japanese developers to you know, use a North American developed game engine, but hey, if if they can use this to get Kingdom Hearts 3 to us faster, by all means do it. <laughs> exactly. Because we're not expecting a, you know, Final Fantasy graphical revo re revolution from this game. No. It's the story that matters. And the gameplay. Exactly. I want it to be fun. Kingdom Hearts never has been an amazing looking game. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't need to be. It's a, no. it's a Disney World. Yeah, it's cartoony. Exactly. Have the art style that works. Make it smooth. Make it look smooth. Mm -hmm. that, that's all you need. You don't need hyper-realistic looks. No, exactly. Please, please, no. Please. That would just look bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Save I don't, for, want, uh, I don't want a hyper-realistic movie. <laughs> oh dear lord, that would be horrifying. Oh, yeah, that'll just put it up there with uh, Silent Hill as far as scary games goes. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. That was horrible. Mm. Alright, well, uh, speaking of horrible, or maybe good, wow. depending on the way you look at it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, wow. <laughs> okay, a as much as we may hate on this franchise, this is actually a pretty damn cool <laughs> offer being done by PlayStation. Mm -hmm. So, we all love cross-buy. Like, when you buy something, say, for PS4, and you get the PS3 and Vita versions for free, that's fucking awesome. Yep. And, for, for what I can think of, this being the very first time this is happening, for a quote-unquote AAA game, we're going to get cross-buy for Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Fighter, or Warfare, sorry. Warfighter was the uh, Battlefield game. Or yeah. Or whatever. Summer. Yeah. So Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is now cross-buy on PS3 and PS4. So uh, that means if you purchase the digital PS3 version of the game, you'll get the digital PS4 version for free and vice versa. The cross-buy promotion also extends to Call of Duty Advanced Warfighter's downloadable content purchases. <laughs> Buy it in on one, play one PlayStation platform, Download it at no additional charge on the other. Uh, on Xbox platforms, Activision is offering a free upgrade from the 360 to one version. That upgrade also applies to DLC purchase on the 360. The upgrade promotion is available until March 31st, 2015, the same as the PlayStation 1. So it's happening on both consoles. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Which okay. I would have loved to have seen that happen, you know, with more games that have come out for both systems. Yeah. Exactly. So, for those who are a fan, you know, for those looking forward to the next Call of Duty, well, there you go. Now you can get it on both systems. Mm -hmm. If you have a PS3 and not a 4 yet, you don't have to yeah. pull off on getting Call of Duty just so you can get it on the PS4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can buy it right away. And then if Wait. you get a system before March, boom, you get the digital version for free on PS4 as well. Mm-hmm. 
Alright, now you've got our next batch of news, which is Nintendo News of Plenty, which I cheated and are giving you free news stories. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, let's tackle this. Alright. Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker, has a U.S. release date now. Yay! And that's apparently there's no no delay, and it is coming out in North America December 5th. Woohoo! So I guess there were rumors that it had been delayed till 2015. Yeah. But, looks like uh, that's not the case. No. And that game is looking really good. Really cute. Aww. <laughs> um? We don't get puzzle games anymore, so that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Fez was pretty puzzly. Mm. But that guy's a douche, so... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, second bit of Nintendo news. And that is that the first two waves of Amiibo are detailed with release dates. I'm just reading the title. So the first two new figures will launch North America on 20, uh, November 21st, and in Europe, November 28th. And the second wave will follow on December 19th in Europe, and sometime the same month in the U.S. Yay! I, I'm actually so excited for the Amiibo. <laughs> oh, yeah? And Nintendo has revealed that the second wave will include Zelda, Diddy Kong, Luigi, Little Mac, Pit, and Captain Falcon, my <laughs> character of choice. So, and are you are you going to buy the Captain Falcon figure? Probably not. Would <laughs> you use these things? Okay, and let me let me tell you. In case you've never heard of them before, you use the figures by placing them on the gamepad to unlock new experiences in various titles. Hmm. As you'd expect, Super Smash Bros. will support the figures through the other games with planned Amiibo functionality for the Wii U, including Mario Kart 8, mm -hmm. the upcoming Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which we just talked about, Mario Party 10, and Yoshi's Woolly World. For more, or for much more on Amiibos, check out our E3. Oh, wait, no, we don't have any E3. <laughs> Someday we'll get to E3, guys. Someday. Uh, yeah, the Amiibos, they're looking pretty cool. I've got two pre-ordered at the moment, and I'm... Looking at pre-ordering two more out of that second batch. How much are these things? Uh, thirteen ninety-nine each. Okay, that's not bad. No. It sounds like some black magic stuff there. Mm. Th they're like really nicely detailed too. <laughs> well, for thirteen bucks. Yeah. Uh, like I think the first, yeah, the first two I have coming are Link and Samus. Okay. And out of the second batch, I'm definitely going to get uh, Luigi and Little Mac. Sweet. Mm -hmm. right. And now, our final bit of the Nintendo news, um, and that's probably the biggest one, and that is that uh, Super Smash Bros. on Wii U now has a release date. And it is going to, you know, confirm all our fears, and that is that it is in November, the busiest month of the year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Coming out November 21st in North yeah. America. Mm -hmm. Europe... In December 5th, in Australia on December 6th. Poor Ozzy legend. Getting the shaft again. Yeah, I'm just going to pay like 100 bucks for this, too. Yeah. Games are expensive there. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually paying 100 bucks for the game, actually. That's however you're getting the uh, adapter thingy. Yep, the adapter and the uh, GameCube controller. Yeah. And that's where Nintendo has also confirmed that, or uh, announced that the GameCube controller mod will also support Wave Birds, which is good, because I, well, if I had the Wii U and this thing, <laughs> I have Wave Birds, so that would be good for me. Mm -hmm. Funny story, this will be the first GameCube controller I've ever owned. You never had a GameCube? Never had a GameCube. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Even I had one of those. <laughs> That's what I mean now, I'm all like... Phew. The, the Wii U is actually my first Nintendo home console since the Super Nintendo. No. Yeah. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I'm quite excited for Super Smash Brothers. Though the fact that it's releasing three days after I'm buying the collector's edition of WWE 2K15 is not exciting for me. Yeah. But. Let's just say maybe timing isn't the best. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm glad I'm not getting this because... I think it come after I get the collector's edition of WWE as well as uh, Dragon Age and Grand Theft Auto and Little Big Planet both come out as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, November is a brutal month, as we will get to in probably two weeks when we go over the games of November. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, I'm just I'm just thankful one of those games will be a Christmas present now. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. All right. So uh, with that, let's move on to our uh, batch of comic and movie news. Uh, one comic, one movie, and one merging both actually. Sweet. So the first news here, lots of comic books have been coming out. Like we've gotten a new Thor mm. series. We've Sex. got oh. a new, uh, or we're getting a new Spider Woman series. And... Sexy Spider Woman. <laughs> yeah, controversy <laughs> there. Um, but debuting in January, another comic book character will get their just reward for their own solo series. And that is the unbeatable Squirrel Girl. That's right, Squirrel Girl is getting her own comic at last. Wow. And personally, I am quite excited for this because she is an awesome character. <laughs> yeah. Not, not many superheroes can say that they single-handedly defeated both Doctor Doom and Thanos, but she did. With squirrels. Exactly. Quite nutty, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if we're going to have to call somebody, who are we going to have to call, Big Boss? Batman. Oh, did I? Oh, I did that wrong. Oh. Da, 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 da. Okay. Let's start the podcast over. I'll get it right next time. I swear. Okay. Time for our top five. <laughs> <laughs> Take seven. <laughs> This was our seventh podcast we just recorded. No. Um, and that is that uh, Ghostbusters, as we heard about the new third Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. So long we've heard about that movie. Long rumored, yes. Um, and it's uh, with, like, women and stuff, right? Yeah. As we heard also. Yep. Actually confirmed now. And, it's, and here's the big thing is that it's official. I'm making a new Ghostbusters. Not me. This is this... <laughs> Fag guy. I'm, I hope I'm not famous. Fag, is that right? Yeah, I think it's Fag. Fig? Probably I'll, Fig. I'll say Fig. Sorry, Fig, if I'm saying your name wrong. Mm. All right, it's official, Fig said. I'm making a new Ghostbusters and writing it with Katie Dippold. And yes, it will star hilarious women. That's who I'm going to call. End quote. And this dip old person wrote the screenplay for The Heat, which was that movie with that woman and... Uh, yeah, Sandra that other, Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Who's the other woman? Melissa McCarthy? No. Yep. Yeah, yeah? that's her. Okay, yep. okay. I'm so bad with people. So it's like, unless you're a, a hockey player, a wrestler, or a fighter, I don't know who you are. <laughs> unless you're like... Or a badminton. Or, uh, sorry, a cricket player. <laughs> yeah, unless you're Don Bradman. <laughs> Oh, we should talk about the history of the Ashes. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, it's going to have hilarious women. Mm. That doesn't be much, but at the same time, there the rumors of a female cast or a female-centered movie have now been confirmed. Mm -hmm. This will be interesting. I mean, I'm open to it. Mm -hmm. Well, considering the other one, you look at the, the cast they had for the old ones and all those names, like, okay, those are funny dudes. Yep. So and, only... and they weren't big either at that time. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, exactly. And now you, now you look at them, and they're some of the biggest names in Hollywood history, arguably. Yep. Um, Rest in peace, Egon. Yeah. <clears throat> and that's where, uh, so, you know, the fact that these are all hilarious women is only fitting. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, speaking about fitting in, Ah, there have been some rumors lately, and, well, we all know how Marvel doesn't own all of their characters, and fuck, this link is not working. Let's see if it works for me. Uh, got it for you. Here, I'll send it to you. Okay, perfect. I saved it. Yay. You're a hero. All right. Sorry, there was an S on the end of it. That's why. Yeah, that was probably it, yeah. All right, well, 
big rumor came out this past week that maybe there's a chance that Spider-Man could be joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Mmm. Yeah, uh, see, according to Hitflix, Marvel Studios is looking to bring Spider-Man into their cinematic universe, but makes it clear that there is no confirmation of this happening, only reports of early discussions. Again, this is mostly speculation, but the report from Hitflix, which has been proving to be pretty good track record when it came, comes to rumorific stuff, Wow, bravo on the words there, IGN. <coughs> but uh, this is the report from Hitflix. While I can't get the confirmations I need to verify the story, I'm hearing that there are some very cool Spider-Man plans being discussed that would help Sony refocus their enormously important franchise, while also opening up some on-screen connections in the on-screen Marvel movie universe that would blow fandom's minds. Will it work out? I don't know. I would love to be able to state for sure that it's happening. What seems to be clear from what I've heard is that Marvel wants to be able to play with all of their characters, and if they can make that work creatively and on a corporate level, they will. And that means the world gets bigger again. So, and uh, the article also goes on to say that the site also indicates that Fox is less cooperative when it comes to sharing their X-Men characters with Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> Since they seem to be doing better anyway. Yeah. You know, I liked the last Spider-Man movie. I thought it was really good. But it really didn't do that well. <laughs> it wasn't really critically acclaimed that much. So no, Not as much as the first one was. Yeah, so, you know, and there's rumors now going around that Sony has canceled their plans for the Venom movie, and they pushed, like, Spider-Man 3, like, way onto the back burner, apparently, so, you know, maybe this is actually possible that Spider-Man will return to the House of M. <laughs> that would be cool. So, would you like to see Spider-Man? back on, like, in the movie universe, hanging out with Tony Stark and Captain America? I would. I mean, who wouldn't, to be honest? Like, it's Marvel, like... Mm -hmm. And Spider-Man's arguably their biggest character. <laughs> yeah. At least before all these movies came out and Robert Downey Jr. started stealing the spotlight, mm -hmm. um, Spider-Man is the biggest Marvel character. I don't think anybody comes close. No. Like, DC, you'd argue it would be Batman or Superman. Mm -hmm. After Spider-Man, I'd probably argue it'd be the Incredible Hulk. Mm. Or, or Captain America. Yep. I mean, Marvel's holy trinity of Cap, Thor, and Iron Man wasn't that well known. Like, outside of Captain America. Yeah. Like, but yeah, it probably goes Spider-Man, Hulk. Cap? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I think this would be pretty cool. The only question is, like, if Spider-Man did come back fully at Marvel, would they already use what Sony's done with The Amazing Spider-Man, or would they reboot the franchise again? <laughs> That's the thing, is would they, I don't know, maybe they just kind of try to insert him in without giving him a new backstory? Hmm. Maybe build off what they had, but at the same time don't address it too much? I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, there is a little item called the Infinity Gauntlet that has the Reality Stone. Yeah. Maybe Thanos could do a little tinkering. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. I I'd like to see Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man still, though. Same. I like him. I What if they, like, brought him in? But Or what if they brought in uh, Spider-Man? But they're like, but we really, really, really want Tobey Maguire back. Oh, God. Oh, oh! <laughs> I'd rather see Nicolas Cage as Spider-Man. George Clooney. <laughs> oh dear Lord! Uh, Sorry, but... ruin everything. <laughs> yeah, there you go, folks. Uh, yeah, that would be absolutely mind blowing if this does happen. Which mm -hmm. cross our fingers it does, because. Having Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe would be awesome. Well, we now have Batman. You have the DC's two biggest guys finally together. Yep. 
So if Marvel manages to merge their biggest names all together, mm-hmm. yeah. It would be pretty freaking sweet. That would be a juggernaut you have there. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately you wouldn't get juggernaut though. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> oh, right. Wolverine. Wolverine's are the biggest, <laughs> other than Spider-Man, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, that connection, why did, connection right there, babe. Why didn't you think of Wolverine? I don't know, maybe because Marvel's killing him off next week. Hmm. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> I think people know since there's been a book called The Death of Wolverine. <laughs> oh, no, don't ruin this. <laughs> All right, so with our news stories out of the way, it's time to dive into our been playing, been watching, and we've actually been reading something section. We have. All right, so uh, do you want to run through what <laughs> you've been playing? Yeah, it's really quick. <laughs> I haven't been playing a whole lot this week. I've primarily been playing Shadow of Mordor. Ooh. Yeah. And what did you think of it? I love it. You know, um, I hardly watched any trailers for it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know much about it, and I had no intentions of really buying it Mm -hmm. until I realized that I was caught up with, you know, I'm level 20 in Destiny, and until I get more friends at level 20 who want (laughs) to grind with me and do the raids and stuff, (laughs) I don't... I don't want to play on my own with randoms kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't have too much incentive to play Destiny. Yeah. So I'm like, well, I'm kind of caught up with games, so why don't I look for something new? And then Shadow of Mordor came out and it's been getting excellent reviews. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, shit, why not? So I picked it up and holy crap. <laughs> it, 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 it's like Tomb Raider in the sense that I didn't intend to buy Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. Actually, I didn't buy it. I borrowed it from a friend. But, oh, man, like, I'm so into it. Like, this is my surprise game of the year for me. Nice. I, I think this is the game that I've enjoyed most this year. Wow. Yeah. Like, it's, it is fun. Mm-hmm. And I've barely even touched the story. There is just so much to do <laughs> that isn't story-related, and it's just how I could just run around and kill captains. I really could do that. Mm-hmm. And, man... And, I don't know if you know too much about the Nemesis system. A little bit. But, like, pretty early on in the game, I happened to stumble upon a captain. And this is when I was still learning the controls. Mm-hmm. So as you can manage, or you can imagine, he owned me. Yep. And killed me off really fast. Mm-hmm. And then got stronger. <laughs> so, later on, I was walking around, and I found him again by accident. Mm-hmm. And I did a little bit better, but he still owned me. Mm-hmm. And got even stronger. <laughs> so this guy is like my arch nemesis I actually posted a picture of him on Twitter I remember seeing that yep Baku the Oathbreaker mm-hmm. and I'm like so I hate this guy so I went and I killed some other captains and I'm like okay I can kill captains but this guy is too good mm-hmm. so I tried to find ways to get the upper hand on him so I did a mission where I went to try to interfere with his recruitment or whatever mm-hmm. and I was fighting him and I got him down to a sliver of health. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm going to kill you. And he retreated just as some of those, like, Karagor beast things showed up. Mm-hmm. And I had to worry about not getting eaten by those because I was really low on health as he's running away. So I didn't have the time to finish him. Mm-hmm. So he es- just barely escaped with his life. So then another time, I went to attack him. And we fought... But he still came out on top, and I quickly managed to escape with my life. And then I read into his weaknesses, and I found, found out he had a fear. Or no, he could be wounded by those Karagors, or he was susceptible to a mounted attacks. So I mounted one of those things, and I'm riding them into his camp. But, but I didn't realize he also has an ability that when he sees these things, he gets enraged and gets like really aggro y and stuff. And, like, I'm, run, I'm riding this thing right towards him, and he just points his crossbow, shoots my mount, and it dies, like, instantly. And I'm like, son <laughs> of a bitch! And then all his guys swarm on me, and I barely managed to fight my way out with my life. So, like, I've had so many encounters with this guy. And then I finally, uh, I'm doing an archery mission mm-hmm. to level up my bow. Mm-hmm. 
and I'm attacking the Citadel, just own, killing these guys, and then he starts walking out, and I'm like, shit. <laughs> I keep firing arrow after arrow after arrow at him. Mm-hmm. And thankfully, I was in an area where I had like a lot of arrows around me so I could keep replenishing. Mm-hmm. And I was able to kill him just before he was able to get close enough to really attack me. Wow. But the back and forth with him was, I, was, I felt so accomplished when I, I defeated him. And I can't tell you the last time I've ever felt that accomplished for defeating an enemy in a video game. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. And that wasn't, and all that happened was not remotely part of the main story Mm -hmm. in any way. And yet. And it was unique to you as well. Exactly. Like I looked up, I tried to show, I wanted to show a friend uh, pictures of this character. Mm Mm-hmm. I looked up Maku the Oathbreaker, mm-hmm. but no, all the names are randomly generated and pulled from different pools mm-hmm. within the game. So there's no set character. You're not going to encounter the same guys as me. You're not going to have the same feud with the same guy. Hmm. So it is so unique to me and to you, and I think that is the coolest thing about this game. Oh, that's awesome, man. So but there's my Shadow of Mordor story. I played a little bit of NHL 15 last night. That was... Uh, that's How all. is that? It's, it's, it's an NHL game. I mean, it's, it's missing a lot. Mm-hmm. But I primarily use NHL just to play quick games. I, you know, that's it. Yeah. I really should do more, but yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Mm-hmm. All right, well, uh, I've got a fair few on my bin playing this week. Um, I'll start things off with a few few minor ones. Uh, I've been playing some Picks the Cat, which is one of the free PlayStation Plus games this month. Yeah. That's very addictive. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very simple puzzle game, but really nice, unique spin put onto it. Um, excited of that, I started playing Dead Space 3 yesterday. Yeah. Eh. Yeah. I- I'm not enjoying the beginning at all. Like, mm-hmm. I- I'm not a real big fan of horror games, so I should like the more action-y style, but uh, Dead Space 1 was such a good game, and I even enjoyed 2 for what it was, but so far, not really being hooked by uh, Dead Space 3 yet. Hope that changes, I'm going to play through the entire game, so Uh, let's see what else. Uh, Murdered Soul Suspect, I played quite a bit of that, got the Platinum Trophy. Uh, good game, had good concepts, but just didn't really achieve a lot, I felt. Like, I, I'd rate it a 6 out of 10, a 6.5 at best. Okay. But it did have some, like, the atmosphere in that game was just fantastic. Because you are dead in the game trying to solve your own murder of why you died. And as you're walking around, you do see, like, other ghosts around like some of them are solid you can go up to them talk to them but others are just like outlines of ghosts like you would see in like old school ghost movies where they're just like they're standing a distance away from you looking straight at you oh yeah that was creepy as fuck like i remember being in this one building and just taking a turn around a corner in this hallway and at the end of the hallway was just this old-looking dude and, like, a little child standing alongside of him. Ghostly uh-huh. outlines, like, I I don't want to go down that way now. <laughs> so, yeah, the atmosphere of what they did was really cool. It was great concept. I just wish there was more there in terms of gameplay. Yeah. Like, I watched your uh, unprofessional review for it. Mm-hmm. And like you basically said, it, there was a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. But... You do get to play as a cat, though, at various times. You can possess a cat and walk around. <laughs> <laughs> so that was interesting. Um, of course, for the first big game that I've been playing, Super Smash Brothers on the 3DS. Mm-hmm. I have been playing a ton of that game. And I'm very, very happy to say the one character that I was most intrigued by is... Become my main, and that's uh, Little Mac from Punch Out. Yeah. Oh, he can kick so much ass on the ground. He's useless in the air, like 
if you get knocked up or try to like jump up and hit somebody, forget it. Oh wow! But if you're on the ground, man, you can pummel people. Okay. And as he's like hitting enemies or getting hit, like a little meter above his name charges up, just like the old games. Mm -hmm. And you can do this knock out KO uppercut, which is really awesome. The screen will <laughs> zoom down in onto him, and it'll like go in slow motion a little bit as he does it. Okay. It's almost like a mini Final Smash in some ways. Huh. But, yeah, he's a risky character to use, too. His uh, left or right smash attack is a uh, diving lunge attack. And once you start that move, there's no way to jump out of it. Okay. So I've found myself jumping off of stages more than once trying to hit people. <laughs> oh. So he's a high reward but high risk character. Okay. Uh, but yeah, outside of that, I'm loving the game. The, there's a massive roster. The game runs at a perfect 60 frames per second. There is no slowdown there. Nice. So for a handheld, that's quite incredible if you ask yeah. me. Yeah, always happen. Um, downside, there is no story mode this time around, which is really disappointing. <laughs> yeah. But there's the final, uh, not final smash, uh, smash run mode, which is kind of cool, where I've only been playing with computer players, but you get dropped randomly on this giant map screen, and you're fighting enemies from, like, all kinds of games, like Pikmin characters, there's been Dr. Robotnik has, like, been around a few times, <laughs> and various Mario characters, but you're fighting them, and you're, like, getting these little things to increase your strength, speed, jump, and two other stats, I can't remember which now, but you go through this for five minutes trying to get as much as you can, and then at the end when time runs out, a few different things can happen. You can have a normal four-way uh, like four -way smash fight with the computer players, or it can be a team battle, or it can be a uh, who can defeat the most enemies before yeah. time runs out, or nice. the last time I played it was a race to get to one side of the map from another. <laughs> uh -huh. So th there's lots of variety and randomness to it, so that's really cool, and you get items and whatnot, like unlockable stuff for the me fighters you can use, moves, equipment, etc. Yeah. So it's really cool. I'm really digging the mode. Nice. That's so the Smash Brothers. And finally on my bin playing, I finally gave in last night. I wasn't going to do it at first, but I finally gave in and downloaded the Bayonetta 2 demo. Okay. Now, did you play the first Bayonetta? Only the demo. Okay, so you know how crazy it can be, right? Yeah, I have, I have ideas, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, in the demo, you're fighting a bunch of angel characters. It's not much in terms of story. It's just like one big fight sequence, basically. Okay. But you're fighting the angel characters, and you're going through the city. Like, massive city. The game looks beautiful. It's running very smoothly. I'm really impressed by it. But uh, the location of where you're fighting the enemies at the beginning, that's the crazy part, because you're on the back of a jet flying through the town or city. <laughs> like, this thing is moving through the city, and you're on the back of it fighting angels. And eventually the plane crashes, and you're on the back of a train, <laughs> and you're fighting more. <laughs> and it ends up with this giant one chasing you through. And you're ending up fighting this thing, and eventually you land, you get a little bit of the story, and you're then fighting another giant character. In, which is a giant demon at this point, which you had summoned to kill the last character. So it's just the game continually jumping the shark, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. It just gets more crazy as time went on. All the while, very smooth. Like, I had no slowdown whatsoever while playing this. The Wii U is running it incredibly well. Nice. Yeah. Like, I think it ran smoother than Bayonetta 1 on the PS3, to be quite fair with you. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
but overall crazy and uh yeah, I can see why it's M rated. <laughs> yeah. Uh Bayonetta does get uh well, naked for the most part, most of the time while you're fighting. Down to come on well. <laughs> So yeah, the Nintendo has not uh, cut back on the fact that her hair is her weapon, so you're going to be quite scantily naked throughout most of the time you're playing Bayonetta 2. Sweet. <laughs> I mean, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, after I was done, I was like, I just played a Nintendo game here. W what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't feel like it. <laughs> exactly, which I think is pretty awesome. Yeah. The downside uh, being that not a whole lot of people are going to buy this game. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's me, Israel, <laughs> maybe Ozzy. <laughs> you guys with your Wii U's? Yeah, buy one. Then buy Bayonetta. <laughs> we'll see. But, uh, yeah, that does it for the, uh, been playing for me. Okay. Now, I suppose we move on. To our been watching. Which is rather full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which, though, most of it, both of us have been watching. Yeah. So we can get through it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should say too much about some of these shows to avoid spoilers. Yeah, exactly. Um, so first thing I have is Arrow, which I know you watched. Yeah. So how about season three? It looks like... Hot uh, damn. Yeah. <clears throat> Without giving any spoilers away. Um, Just it, that ending. <laughs> yeah, the ending is shocking, and it's clear that, yeah, they're keeping the momentum from season two going. Mm -hmm. Which is good, because season two is phenomenal. Yep. And they got the lovey-dovey stuff right out of the way right off the beginning. Yeah. Hopefully, that's the end of it. <laughs> well, too much. So. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it was a good first episode. I'm glad to see everybody back. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And the new Vertigo guy was awesome. Yeah, he did a really good job, so that was good. All right, moving on. Yeah, and uh, tying in with Arrow, we also, well, you watched it a while ago, but I watched The Flash. Yeah. Which, as I was telling you before we started recording, um, I wasn't, I was really skeptical about The Flash. Mm -hmm. I don't know, the, everything I've seen, but it's like, eh, it doesn't look like it excites me that much. But I really enjoyed the first episode. Mm -hmm. A lot more than I expected to. It had a movie type feel to it. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and like I said, like, Arrow was dark and gritty, whereas this reminded me a bit of the lightheartedness, like the... It wasn't even, it wasn't lighthearted, because there was still some heavy stuff, but mm -hmm. it wasn't really as gritty as uh, Arrow, but almost, it did remind me of Smallville a bit, mm -hmm. which is good, because I miss Smallville, I love Smallville. Mm. So, uh, but yeah, it definitely had kind of a, probably because they're dealing with the Flash and actual powered people, whereas you don't see much of that in Arrow. Mm -hmm. But uh, we could now. <laughs> exactly. Um, that... That's the one thing. Everybody knows about the scene where they're talking with each other. Yeah, and it ties into both shows. Yeah, which I thought that was cool. I didn't think they were going to do it on Arrow, no. but I like the way they did it. Yeah, and yet I like how they didn't show the same scene. Yeah. That's the thing I like, because if they showed it again, it'd be like, I just saw this last night. Mm -hmm. Whereas, no, they handled that very well. Yep. But, uh... <laughs> but yeah, the scene between... Ollie and Barry there, it's like, hmm, Ollie doesn't seem to mind that there's, you know, superhumans around now. Yeah. But that was, it was good as a way they set it up and explained how there's going to, how you can be encountering more metahumans. Yep. And not just those who are, you know, injected with Mirakuru. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. So who knows who will be showing up now on both shows? Exactly. So that that opened uh, that opened the doors, which is good. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, no, I I definitely recommend checking out Flash for anybody who's on the fence. Mm -hmm. I was on the fence about it, and I am very pleasantly surprised. Yep. Mm -hmm. Next up is something I guess that we're maybe not quite as enthusiastic about. <laughs> yeah. And that is Gotham. The third TV, DC TV show. On yeah, the and you know, I want to like it more than I do. Mm -hmm. Thing is, they've been going back and forth, because the first episode was, eh, 
good. Yeah. Like, it was a pass for a pilot episode. Yeah. And, of course, pilot episodes, I find, are always kind of shaky. Mm-hmm. With the exceptions, because they have to introduce so much. Yeah. But I felt Gotham's was... Like, they really tried to introduce everything at once, and I'm like, you don't need to introduce all of this. Mm-hmm. You seriously could have cut back on so much. Yep. And then the second episode I thought was fantastic. Yeah, the second one really picked up, and then this last one was... Yeah. Again, it was kind of a regression. Yep. The thing that's really bugging me about the episode, and, well, you know my tweet about this, yeah. was the fact that they're focusing so much on Bruce Wayne. I know. It's not like we have a whole series of movies about him and yeah. how how he began. Yeah. Like, we we all know the story of Martha Wayne, or Martha and yeah. Death Wayne. <laughs> Tim, wasn't it? Tim? No. Thomas, Thomas. Thomas and Mar- Tom and Martha? Is that, yep. yeah? That's it. Okay. Well, we all know the story of the Waynes <laughs> and how they were killed, and that's where... When the show started, I expected them to show the murder, mm-hmm. show young Bruce, have Gordon make his little promise to Bruce, and then that would be the last we see of Bruce, more or yeah. less. Mm-hmm. Just to yeah. kind of use the murder as the way to dive right into the show and introduce us to the police unit and everything. Mm-hmm. But clearly that's not the case. Clearly we need to see lots of Bruce Wayne every week. Yeah, we need to see him sword fighting with Alfred. We need yeah. to see him hurting himself. Yeah. Uh, I don't... Not eating. <laughs> <laughs> Wanting to give orphans clothes. Yeah. Money. Uh, it, I don't know. I think maybe another problem is that I don't like this Alfred just because it's not Michael Caine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm fine with that. I, I, I'm liking Alfred. I, I don't know. I, I... Michael Caine is Alfred. <laughs> 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 yeah. But yeah, they, they've they got a lot of improvements they need to do for that series. Because like, yeah. like we were talking about before, it can be a great, gritty crime drama. It really could. Though, god damn it, everybody on the force except for Gordon is corrupt. Yeah, they're all... And Which, it's not making, like, hardly any of the characters likable. <laughs> I know. Gordon's the only guy I like, pretty much. Gordon and Barbara are the only two I like. Yeah. I like his partner, though. Like, he's the lovable asshole. <laughs> oh, no, I, see, I don't even like him that much, to be 100% honest with you. Oh, I like I like the, the crimes unit who are, like, kind of working against them, because yeah. they, at least they're, you know, cops with integrity. Mm-hmm. I'm like, are, are these guys meant to be the bad guys? Because I'm cheering for them. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I don't know where this is all going. And that's where, I can't remember who tweeted or something, but someone's like, you know, there's so much corruption in Gotham. It's like, how are you even having a show where it's like remotely worth saving? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty sad right now. Yeah, I really hope they can step it up because I like what's there, mm-hmm. and I feel like it could really be great. But as it stands, I've yet it isn't. Yeah, they need to focus more on Gordon. And, you know, him trying to improve the uh, police force. Yeah. Him actually trying to be a good cop and mm-hmm. uphold the integrity of what it is to be a police officer. Exactly. You know, one character that I am liking that they've used from the Batman universe, Penguin. Yeah, he's been done well. Yeah. It's like, the first episode was like, eh, okay, second episode, fantastic. Uh, the way the first episode ended with him and then the sec- how he came into his role in the second yeah. And even the third. Even even the little bits he had in the third. Yep. I think he, they probably put him back into Gotham a little too quickly, though. Uh, that I definitely agree with. I'm like, whoa. That, I expect him to come back later in the series. Or not the series, but this season. Yeah. And like, the ending, too, was a little too rushed, I think. Yeah, agreed. So, yeah. We'll see. I'm still going to keep watching it, because yep. I'm enjoying it enough to watch it, but it isn't great like Arrow is, or even like Flash and Press. How would that impress me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to give them probably three or four more episodes. If they don't really hook me then, I'll probably stop watching until it appears on Netflix. <laughs> yeah. 
All right. So uh, yeah. let's keep moving, I guess. Okay. I've also watched... Uh, I watched the first episode slash movie thing for Star Wars Rebels. Oh yeah, because that apparently starts next week, I think. Mm-hmm. But they showed like a, a forty-minute episode to kind of introduce it to the characters and stuff. Okay, but it's quite kidsy and that, but so was Clone Wars. Yeah, but it's fun. It's enjoyable. It's uh, and the the music was excellent. So it really captured that kind of old school Star Wars feel. Mm-hmm. It's not super serious, but it's just it's fun, and that's where I really I really enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. I heard they weren't afraid to kill people either. And that's the other thing is, despite the fact that like it had a really kidsy vibe, they were shooting stormtroopers in the chest, and they were just falling, you know, <laughs> they were falling down. And I don't think you get shot by a laser bolt and fall asleep. So <laughs> yeah, no, it was. Uh, I won't say too, too much about it, but uh, mm-hmm. it was uh, good. I enjoyed it. Awesome. If it's something, yeah, for anyone listening, if it's something, if you like Star Wars, I definitely recommend giving it a try and seeing if uh, if it appeals to you. Mm-hmm. Cool beans. Mm-hmm. All right, well, uh, one of the last superhero things on my list here is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This second season has been fantastic so far <laughs> like man they have been hitting the nail on the head with every single episode right now nice and the third episode again without spoiling too much some really great plot twists and yeah the story is developing really really good and okay, uh, the last thing I have on my list is I've been powering through Hannibal on Netflix mm. I'm Halfway through the second season right now. And holy fuck, that show is good. That show is really good. (laughs) Uh, Have you watched any of it? No, but my sister loves it. Yeah, um... If you do start watching, word of advice, try not to eat while you start watching. (laughs) That's what I, uh... Like my sister, she says, she's like, man, this show makes me so glad I'm a vegetarian. (laughs) Yeah, I, I've had the problem where every time I've had the chance to sit down and watch it, I have been eating something. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, um, uh, slow bites. Because, <laughs> man, you will never look at a dinner party the same way again after watching Hannibal. <laughs> yeah. But, man, I'm amazed with the amount of stuff they can get away with. Because yeah. this show airs on NBC. Oh, and, yeah. Sure. It's bloody. It's violent. Almost every single episode has somebody with their body ripped open and guts coming out. Oh, wow. Like, man, they're autopsy after autopsy of, like, just stomachs open showing, like, what organs have been removed. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just some of the creative kills that they've had in the episode, too, have been great. Hmm. Like, oh. Emotional. The story alone has been really, really good, and it's a mind fuck. It is yeah. an absolute mind fuck. Every single episode, which yeah. I love. I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, Hannibal has been amazing, and I'm so sad that it's only now that I've been watching it because <laughs> it's becoming one of my favorite TV shows. I think. Oh wow. Yeah. Nice. Uh, I'm really excited to finish up this season. I think season three starts up relatively soon, so okay. looking forward to what's going to happen. <laughs> and that's the other thing. They're not afraid to kill off people. Like uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like you never know who's going to wind up dead. <laughs> okay. All right, so it's time to dust off this next section because it doesn't re- get, really get used that often. No. It's time for our Ben reading section. Mm-hmm. So what have you been reading? Um, I've been reading a book that I started reading like last year or maybe the year before, but I never finished it. So I just started reading it again. And that's uh, The Rum Diary by uh, Hunter S. Thompson, mm-hmm. the guy who wrote uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Okay. Um, both of which, The Rum Diary and Fear and Loathing, are movies starring Johnny Depp. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It's a pretty good read. Yeah. Something happened, though, in my last session of reading it that left me feeling a little bit uneasy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't too thrilled with it. Hopefully it gets kind of addressed and it turns out what we're led to believe isn't true. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. But overall, it's been a good read. So, yeah. Cool. Sweet. Yeah. You? Uh, I've actually been reading some of the comics I've been picking up. Okay. <laughs> uh, first off, I've read... They're not just sitting on the shelf? They're not just sitting on the shelf or in the boxes. Mm -hmm. um, first off, I read the first issue of Thor, which is starring the new Lady Thor. Sexy Thor. Yeah. <laughs> Bam chicka wow wow. Um, good start, but Lady Thor only showed up on like the last two panels. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, it was great. It sets up like what has happened to Thor and like how he's dealing with the current situation of being unworthy. <laughs> okay. So it, it was good. It was an interesting read. Nice start. It's got me interested for what's coming next. Mm -hmm. And the next thing I've been reading, just before this podcast, actually, I read Avengers and X-Men, Access Issue Number 1, the next big Marvel event. And the Red Skull has always been one of my favorite villains in the comics, so the fact that he has now technically merged with Onslaught, which is probably one of the most feared villains in the Marvel Universe, being the like, oh, what was it? The mind of Charles Xavier and Magneto, like the the embodiment of those two characters, <laughs> now being merged with the Red Skull. Like, just picture the Red Skull having Professor's Professor Xavier's powers. That's deadly. <laughs> yeah, amplified to great effect because in the episode he's spreading his message of hate telepathically across the entire globe. Uh, the episode, uh, the issue kicked off to a great start. Uh, it's being done by one of my favorite writers, uh, Rick Remainder, who had a fantastic Punisher run a couple years ago. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's off to a good start. Really emotional issue to kick things off with. Like, ju There's one part where Rogue kind of like touches Onslaught to like get into his mind and take his powers. And when she does that, she finds out that Xavier is actually inside trying to fight back as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was a really emotional scene between those two characters. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it's off to a good start. Lots of characters being shown off. Uh, Havoc, Scott, Kid Apocalypse was there for a second. It's going to be really cool to see where this event goes, I think. And yeah, that does it for me for the bin reading. Yes. So that goes on to our shameless self-promotion section. Mm -hmm. Where I have nothing. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You can, as always, follow me on Twitter at the underscore highwind32. Mm -hmm. I'm using, and I don't even know what I even tweet. <laughs> follow you on Monday nights where I spoil Raw for you. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, Alright, well, I don't have too much either, just the normal comic book stuff. Um, I stuck up some Picks the Cat gameplay. Voiceless, you can watch me suck at that game for a <laughs> bit. And I also put up a new unprofessional review for Murdered Soul Suspect, which mm -hmm. I think turned out quite well. Yep. You yeah. sum up it quickly enough, which is pretty much what the point of your unprofessional reviews is. Mm -hmm. Quick. Effective, unprofessional, and this one was pun-filled, so there was also that. Very pun-filled. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, go check that out. And that does it for me, really. Hopefully more <laughs> gameplay videos in the near future. Possibly Minecraft. <laughs> hmm. Alright, so oh. uh, as per usual, guys, if you have any questions and comments for us, please leave them down below. Uh, once again, we have no questions and comments, so... <laughs> yeah, sad times. Hmm, sad. Sure. Alright, I'm trying to think of a question. <laughs> Not quite as good as my man crush's question. That was a 
Good question. That was a good question. If you could have any one wish, other than money, because that's just lame, mm -hmm. um, what would you wish for? And you can't wish for more wishes. <laughs> that's, that's even more lame than money. Okay, so no money, no... No wishes. wishes of any sort. No, no cheating the system to get like I wish for genies. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Oh god, that's a tough question. Yeah. That's a really tough question. Uh, well, do you have an answer? I do, because I've thought about this before. Okay. Um, I can't remember where I heard this, but I heard somebody asked the same question to a. Uh, I don't know if he was a film critic or a movie director or something. But he picked, if he could have any wish, he would choose the ability to watch something again as if it was the first time. Oh, that's nice. And I would choose to have the ability to experience things again for the first time ever, whether it be a favorite movie, uh, a good book, uh, listening to a CD for the first time ever, or of course, playing a video game as if it was the first time. Because I'm just trying to stop and think of what it would be like to play Final Fantasy VII again for the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there's one downside to that wish. Mm -hmm. You could be given the mind of a goldfish. That, no, no. I said what you do. It's a trophy hunt. It's not like, oh shit, I have no idea what the fuck I'm even doing. <laughs> when you choose, you have the ability to... It's an ability. Fair enough, fair enough. That would be my wish, to, to be able to, you know, when I want to, experience a, a video game or a movie again as if it was the first time. Yep. Cool. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I, I really don't know. <laughs> it's like I can see downsides to almost everything, but, oh, jeez. Yeah, you know what? Fuck it. The healing <laughs> power of Wolverine. Alright, that's fair. So why not? Good health for eternity. Endless video games. Here you go. <laughs> uh, if I had more time to think, I'd probably come up with something better. I know, but the fact that I had this question before mm -hmm. let me have a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd probably wish for something, like I said, or, you know, good health for entire family and whatnot. Yeah, well, peace, well, all that shit. Man, fuck that. <laughs> that would make the world boring. I wish for world peace. Ha! <laughs> Gay! <Okay. laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, with that, I do believe our podcast has come to an end once again. And hopefully this episode won't be lost for a few days. Still can't believe that happened to me. That so, uh, Big Boss... As per usual, why don't you take us away? And as per usual, I am not prepared for this. So thank you, boys and girls, for tuning into this week's installment of the Cannot Podcast, where we discuss stuff and things. <laughs> oh, and The Walking Dead starts soon, right? Yeah. Um, so thanks for tuning in. You've been awesome. Leave questions and comments for us. And we'd be happy to answer all of them. Uh... And with that, I've been Big Boss, and with you, as always, has been your host, the crazy Lord X. <laughs> and we will see you again next time. Until then, stay alpha. Bye, everybody. <laughs>